Good evening, everybody in South Africa and Zimbabwe. Welcome to Global Education's Virtual Expo. My name is George. I work with the team at Global. Um, we're an education um, counseling company, I guess, like a family business that helps students advise them, counsel them, helps them with accommodation. Um, but really, we want to get you the right information. And um, today, you're going to be hearing from Chris Garrett, who is um, one of the re senior regional managers at the University of Reading. Um, Reading is one of our key partners. It's a university that we love to support. They've got a lot of opportunity out um, for you as an international student. Um, so without further ado, we're going to have Chris speaking in a little bit. But for the housekeeping, just before I forget here, um, please put your questions in the Q&A and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. Um, but yeah, it sounds like an interesting one from Chris and I'm looking forward to discussing with him as well. Chris, the floor is yours. Um, okay, so you should all now be able to see um, my presentation slides. So, yep, good evening to everyone in uh, South Africa, Zimbabwe. Um, greetings from Reading. Um, it's almost dark outside, uh, so the, the seasons are certainly changing. But anyway, um, I'm here to give you a brief kind of tour of the University of Reading. Um, I'm going to talk to you for about 20, 25 minutes, and then we'll have some time at the end for any questions um, that you'd like me to answer. Um, during the presentation today, I'm going to cover a number of topics. Um, we're going to look at things like the rankings of Reading um, and our research background. I'm going to tell you a bit more about what it's like to, to live in Reading on the campus, accommodation, how to get in, how to apply, and then most importantly, um, the scholarships and financial aid that we currently offer international students. So I'm going to kick off with a bit of an intro and some fun facts to start with. Um, I'm not sure if many of you have heard before, but um, the University of Reading um, was actually um, established a long time ago, so more than 125 years ago, as an extension college of the University of Oxford. Um, I'm sure that you've all heard of the University of Oxford being one of the most prestigious universities in the world. Um, Oxford decided to create Reading College um, to provide higher education to um, students in Reading in the Berkshire area, which is the county that Reading is based in. Um, so that's kind of where our history and heritage um, initially came from. We're a public university, um, so we're, we're funded by the government. Um, and if I tell you a bit more about our history, um, what's really interesting I think we've just lost Chris. Um, give us a couple seconds and we'll get him back on onto the screen. I do apologize. There seems to be a connection issue from his side. Um... So I'm going to carry on. OK, super. So I'm just going to carry on um, with uh, I'm going to pick up where I left off. Um, so I was just talking about some of the accolades of the university, um, the Queen's Anniversary Prize for Higher Education. Um, this is for our contribution in areas such as uh, meteorology, archaeology, uh, typography and English literature. Um, and the last fun fact is our campus um, has been awarded um, a green flag um, award for the last 10 years, which makes it uh, one of the, the most outstanding green spaces uh, in the UK. And you'll see what I mean by outstanding green spaces in a moment when I show you some pictures of the campus. 
So for those of you wondering where exactly Reading is located, um, we're just outside of London. Um, so it's about 25 minutes from central London on the train. Um, we're very close to Heathrow, so London Heathrow International Airport, um, which is about 30 minutes by, by road. Um, we're also very close to uh, cities like Oxford, um, hence the, the story about the University of Oxford earlier on. Um, but Reading is very well connected to the rest of the UK, so it's very easy to, to hop on a train uh, and you can be in any of the other major cities such as Bristol, uh, Manchester, Birmingham, uh, or even uh, further north uh, up into Newcastle. Um, we are also home to what we call the UK's version of the Silicon Valley. Um, so I'm sure that, that uh, lots of you here understand uh, and have heard of Silicon Valley in the States. Um, but just outside the city centre of Reading, um, we have a big international business park. Uh, and this is where we have lots of multinational international firms um, that have headquarters. So companies such as Oracle, Huawei, Siemens, Microsoft. They all have offices here in Reading, so it's a fantastic location um, for students who are interested in getting internship opportunities um, and graduate employment with companies um, of that, that stature. So in terms of our campus, um, we actually have a number of campuses, um, but our main campus here in Reading is called White Knights. Um, it's our kind of iconic campus and it's the real heart of the university. Um, it's a 130 hectare um, parkland campus. We have lots of older historical buildings that are listed um, from the kind of Victorian uh, Edwardian, Edwardian era. Um, but we also have lots of really modern facilities as well. We're constantly investing uh, in the campus and our facilities for students to study uh, and to research. Um, we also have the London Road campus, and that's where the university started life. Um, so this is where Reading College was established. Um, and the image that you can see there on the right hand side is the Great Hall. And this is what's used for our graduation ceremonies every year. So White Knights is home to the majority of our academic schools. Uh, London Road is home to the Institute of Education and the School of Architecture. Um, Henley Business School, which I'll talk to you about in a moment, um, some of their programmes are delivered at another campus just outside of Reading that's called Greenlands. Um, and then some of you might know that Henley Business School also has a campus in South Africa. Um, so this is where they deliver some uh, postgraduate programmes in business. Uh, and then the university also has a campus in Malaysia. So as I said earlier, we really do have a a global footprint. So this is a picture of um, part of the White Knights campus. Uh, the campus is so vast, so big, that it's actually quite difficult to fit the whole thing into one picture. Um, but this does just illustrate the, the really kind of tranquil, beautiful Parkland campus that the University of Reading has to offer. Um, Pretty much all of the buildings that you can see across the center of this slide are part of the university. Um, so the big kind of circular um, building towards the bottom that looks like an ear. This is one of our accommodation um, villages. Um, and then in the center of the campus, we have the other faculties. Um, the houses that you can see around the outside of the campus are residential, um, but it does show you that we we are a very green campus in very close to the center um, of Reading itself. The lake that you can see on the left hand side is also part of the campus. Um, I actually spend a lot of time, um, especially during COVID, um, having a lovely walk around uh, the campus and around the lake during the summer, lots of wildlife. Um, and then what you can't see in the left hand side of the picture is also um, a forest. It's called the wilderness. Um, so we really do have uh, quite a, a beautiful setting for our students to come and study in. In terms of <clears throat> in terms of our academic structure, um, I've got a slide here that demonstrates the main subject areas that we offer. This is not an extensive list of all of the degree programs um, that we offer, but it's subject clusters 
Um, so you'll see that we really do offer most programs that you would expect to see um, at a university in the UK. The only subject areas that we don't currently offer are medicine, dentistry, uh, physiotherapy, um, and some engineering courses. Um, but most of the other subject areas we, we do offer. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about today was some of the, the areas of excellence at Reading as well. Now, rankings were a really good and useful tool for helping students to establish um, how well the university performs in the subject area. Um, I would say it's very important to make sure that you understand how the rankings work, what the methodology is, and what those rankings actually mean, because there are many, many, many um, international global rankings there are national rankings and they will all look at something quite different but this slide just demonstrates some of our key um, rankings um, so on the left hand side uh, you'll see the we are a top 30 uk university in the world rankings and that's in the qs world university rankings so out of the 130 plus um, universities in the uk we are the 27th highest UK university um, in the rankings um, and we're currently uh, number 202 um, in the world. Um, on the right hand side, uh, some of the subject areas um, where we have um, some rankings that we're especially proud of and these are the subjects where we're top 20 in the UK rankings. So that's looking at the complete university guide, which again is uh, another ranking um, website. Now, Reading is a research intensive university, um, so we have a huge community of um, academics who are researching um, topics that are very much in the, the world platform at the moment. 98% um, of our research is deemed to be internationally recognised. Uh, and you'll see here some of the other rankings based on our research intensity, the amount of income that we receive from research councils to conduct research and then the power that our research actually has. Now, for some of you, you might not really understand why research is important for you. Um, you know, maybe if you're coming for an undergraduate program, but it's very key, I would say, because the people that are researching these really kind of hard hitting topics that affect us all in the world today are the people that will be teaching you the people that will be using their research to inform the curriculum that they're teaching you. Um, so it's just, again, another indication um, of our kind of input into the, the local, national uh, and the international issues that the world faces. Now, some of you might find the stripes on the bottom of this slide familiar. Um, and for those of you that are interested, um, whether it's through study or just a, a personal interest in climate change, you might have seen these stripes before. They were actually developed by one of the professors here at Reading, Professor Ed Hawkins, uh, and he used these, he invented these um, coloured stripes to help people depict the, the rise in annual um, temperatures uh, across the world. So it really kind of illustrates the, the change that we're seeing in the climate. Now, climate sciences is one of the, the main areas of excellence here at Reading. Um, and you'll see here, we're, we're very well ranked in terms of uh, the Centre for World University rankings. And we've got staff that have been awarded Nobel prizes for their contribution um, to climate change. <clears throat> we hosted a climate change summit here in Reading um, recently, here in September. Um, and we had more than 500 delegates from all over the world that came together to discuss climate education and how we can start to integrate climate change education into the curriculum in schools across the world. Now, another related area to climate sciences, um, which is another area of excellence for, for Reading, is agriculture, food and health. So we're currently ranked 12th in the world um, and the highest ranked UK university for agriculture and forestry. Uh, and that's based on the QS world subject rankings. Um, so it really does put us right in the, the kind of elite group of universities who are researching this very important topic. 
Um, and they're looking at, again, things like climate change, resource degradation, hunger, poverty, diet and health. Um, so if you're interested in any of those subjects, then please definitely go and check them out uh, to see what we offer here at Reading. <clears throat> now, the other area of excellence uh, at Reading is business. Um, and we're home to the Henley Business School, which you may or may not have heard of before. Uh, but Henley is one of the oldest business schools in the UK, uh, founded um, in 1945. It's one of about 100 business schools in the world that have a triple accreditation, which is the highest possible standards. Um, and that puts us really in this elite category of um, business education. Uh, Henley Business School is also home to the ICMA Centre, um, which is a specialist centre for finance, uh, studies in finance. Um, so we have, for example, um, trading simulation terminals. Um, so this, this is for students who are interested in um, finance, investment banking, uh, fintech. Um, but it's, again, another specialist area that we offer here at Reading. Uh, Henley is very well ranked um, in terms of their subject areas. So land and property management is currently ranked number two in the UK. Uh, so this is subjects like real estate. Um, their executive MBA program is currently ranked number three in the UK. And then their masters in finance and their masters in management are currently ranked seventh and eighth. Um, so Henley really is a pretty good choice for, for students of undergraduate and postgraduate level um, for their business education. So now that I've talked a bit about the subjects, I thought I'd briefly touch on some of the kind of aspects of campus life here at Reading. Um, as I've seen, as I mentioned before, and you've seen from the slides, we are a campus based university. So that means that everything you need is all in one place. Um, and on the right hand side of this slide, I've listed some of the facilities that we offer on the main White Knights campus. So you really do have access to everything you need. Um, you've got your uh, faculties and the library for study. You've got cafes, restaurants um, for, uh, you know, just kind of hanging out with your friends, uh, for, for going for meals, for drinks. We have a supermarket on the campus itself um, offering fresh produce and um, we have a hotel. Um, we also have Santander um, Bank. And then in terms of entertainment, our student union um, has its own nightclub. It's called 360. Um, we have Mojo's, which is one of the bars on the campus and then Park House, which is a beautiful Victorian building that um, serves traditional pub um, food and drink. Uh, for those of you coming potentially with children, we have a nursery and a preschool on the campus. And then very close to the campus, we have a medical centre um, and a dentist. Um, so we really do cater for every aspect of student life. Now, student support is really important to us. and It's important to you as an international student uh, because we've been welcoming students from outside of the UK for more than 100 years. We know exactly what support you need. Um, so first of all, we have uh, an academic English programme, which are free courses for all international students to take. Um, and this is just to help you uh, to enhance your English language skills, if that's necessary. Uh, we also offer a programme of um, kind of academic support in terms of presentations, academic writing, referencing, because this will probably vary a bit from what you're used to currently, whether you're at school or at university uh, in South Africa or Zimbabwe. Um, the, the Reading University Students' Union, or RUSU, which is what we, we shorten that to, um, they offer lots of support for students across the board. This is academic support, pastoral support, um, but they're also the organisation within the university that offers all of the extracurricular um, activities. So we currently have more than 150 different sports clubs and societies uh, that range from kind of weird and wonderful sports and societies um, to the more traditional. So culture and faith-based societies, language-based, debating societies, uh, law society. Um, I think we have uh, some really strange uh, kind of culture, not cultural, but uh, people that have interests like a chocolate appreciation 
uh, society. So people that just want to get together and eat chocolate, basically. Uh, so that's the fun stuff that Rusu um, is known for. Um, our career service is award-winning um, based on Times Higher Education um, uh, Awards back in 2017. Um, but careers is really important to us because we want you to not only enjoy and have a good education, but we want to make sure that you go on um, to fulfill your employment dreams, whatever they may be. So we have a team of careers advisors that work across the university to put together uh, lots of events across the year. Um, so these might be internship events, graduate employability, recruitment events, volunteering events. Um, but they also invite um, companies to come in to talk to students about opportunities in those industries and career uh, paths. Um, so it's a really kind of full on calendar and all of the services that the careers team provide are completely free. So I mentioned the library uh, just a moment ago, but I just wanted to come back to tell you a bit more about why it's so special. And um, you can see the picture on the left hand side. This is the outside of the library on the right hand side, the inside. It's uh, the library has undergone a huge transformation in the last three to four years, which was completed last year. And um, so a 40 million pound investment um, to improve the study space um, for students. Um, during term time, when you're studying, the, the library is open 24 hours, it's got more than a million books. Um, but what's really important is that you have uh, all day, everyday access to online resources, so books, journals, um, and other um, services offered by the library. Now, I couldn't do this presentation without mentioning sports. Um, so we're very much into sports in the UK uh, and generally on a Wednesday in the UK universities don't have any teaching because this is sports this is when um, team the sports teams at the universities will come together to to play against other universities um, so it's really fun um, if you want to join a sports club just uh, because you have an interest for fitness or if you're actually playing professionally you want to play and join in one of our teams uh, to play against other unis um, but we offer lots of different sports clubs and societies we've got um, a gym on the campus itself um, so students get very reduced price access to the gym and loads of other indoor and outdoor facilities so if sports your thing head over to the the Rusu website uh, and you'll find out a bit more about what they have to offer now, accommodation is also an important aspect of uh, figuring out what your international um, study abroad might look like. Um, and here at Reading, we have um, an extensive range of accommodation um, that we have to offer international students. Um, on our campus alone, we have 5,000 rooms. Um, so we have more than enough um, space on campus for students that are joining us. Um, for students that perhaps don't want to live on campus, then um, there's lots of private accommodation um, uh, in and around the campus that you can find on your own. Uh, but the campus accommodation that we have is no more than a 10, 15 minute walk to the center of the campus itself. Um, just to give you an idea of scale, the, the University of Reading White Knights campus it will take you about 20, 25 minutes to walk from one side of the campus to the other, um, crossing over a bridge, over the lake or through the forest, purely because of how big the campus is. Now, there's lots of different types of accommodation. Um, we have rooms that have ensuite uh, bathrooms. You can have uh, your own studio apartment. You can have um, a bedroom in an apartment with other people. Um, they all vary in um, price, um, but they range from about £133 per week. So it's just to give you an idea of how much you could expect to pay if you were to come to Reading. Um, we do offer um, catered and self-catered options. So if you would prefer to do your own cooking, then that's absolutely fine. Um, you can have a self-catered option where the accommodation will come with uh, kitchen facilities. Um, or we offer a meal plan for students who want to take the, the effort out of their university experience and have all of their meals prepared for them. 
Uh, I just wanted to show you this image um, because it really does depict the, the style of the University of Oxford. And this is uh, one of our halls, it's called Wantage Hall, um, that's right next to the White Knights campus. Uh, and this is the first hall that was based on the style of the University of Oxford. So it's a very old uh, Victorian looking building. So that's accommodation. Uh, moving on to a bit more of the serious details. So if you're interested in applying to, to come to Reading, you would have to make sure that you meet our entry requirements. And the entry requirements vary depending on the kind of degree that you're interested in studying, whether it's an undergraduate or a postgraduate. Um, and also the qualifications that you currently are studying. So um, we accept qualifications from all over the world. Um, but if you're studying A-levels or the International Baccalaureate, um, you can see the, the grades uh, here on the slide. If you're studying the Senior National Certificate in South Africa, um, most of our programmes, you would need to have 77666 or AABBB. Um, we do accept English language from within the Senior National Certificate, um, and it depends on the course, but it's either grade C5 or B6. So there's no need for you to take um, an IELTS test uh, unless it's for a very small number of courses where it's a professional requirement, and requirement that you must take IELTS. But um, if you are interested in applying, then obviously reach out to myself or to uh, the team at Global Education and they can tell you a bit more about how the, the entry requirements um, actually work. Um, if you're interested in studying a master's, then generally we're looking for either a, a second class degree um, uh, at the higher division, um, and some of our programmes, um, we will accept a tutu, so that's second class, lower division. Um, and if you're interested in a PhD, um, generally you have to have a bachelor's degree um, at 2-1, um, and some of our subject areas will ask you to have a master's degree as well. Now, the entry requirements is the more complicated bit, and I've whist uh, whistled through that really quickly, um, but we do have all of this information on our website as well. Um, so I'm almost there, just a couple more slides. Um, first of all, if you do want to apply, um, there are different application routes. Um, George waved his hand just now, but uh, Global Education can help you from A to Z with your application to the University of Reading. But for your information, if you're applying for a bachelor's degree, um, you need to apply via UCAS, which is a centralised admission service that all universities in the UK um, work with. And if you want to apply to start next September, so September 2022, we would recommend that you get your application submitted before the 26th of January next year. Um, so applications are open now um, and they will continue to stay open all throughout next year. But um, once the, the vacancies, the spaces on the programmes have been filled, we can no longer accept applications. And that's why it's good to get your application done as early as possible. Um, if you're interested in a master's or a PhD, then you apply to us directly. Um, and again, global education can help with that. But we have an application form on our website. Um, you don't need to have completed your qualifications to be able to apply. Um, you can apply whilst you're finishing high school, or whilst you're finishing your bachelor, your master. Um, and all you'll need to do is put details of what you're currently studying um, and then we'll make you an offer that has conditions. Um, you will need to write a personal statement uh, and a personal statement tells us why you want a space on our program. Um, again, Global Education, they're the experts, they can help you through that process. Uh, and you also need some references from your school teachers or your professors at university. Uh, scholarships at Reading, uh, because we're right at the beginning of the application cycle for 2022 entry, we haven't quite finalised um, what scholarships we'll be offering for students next year. But what you see on the slide here right now is a snapshot of what we currently offer for students who are joining us right now, this September. Um, if you're coming for a foundation programme, we have some um, small awards. Um, for undergraduate students, we have 
what's called the Vice Chancellor's Global Scholarship Award. Um, so it's four thousand um, pounds as a tuition fee discount, and that's for the highest achieving students. Um, we have a master scholarship scheme that again offers four thousand pound discount on your tuition fee. And then the Henley Business School usually has an annual fund of one million pounds that they offer to students from all across the world. Um, but all of those scholarships that I mentioned are based on academic excellence. Um, and generally you have to make an application for a scholarship once you have um, made an application to study with us here at Reading. We're also part of lots of other external scholarship schemes. So many of you might have heard of the Commonwealth Scholarship Scheme, Achievenings, and we have um, the World Bank Scholarship, uh, Joint Japan. Um, so we're part of all of these scholarship schemes that offer some really generous funding. But do take a look, first of all, at our website to see what we offer um, and the schemes that we're part of and also to find out whether you would be eligible for any of those scholarships. Now, I just want to briefly talk about the graduate route. Um, now, this is a really exciting development in the UK um, and the graduate route is um, a way for students once they graduate from their studies in the UK to be able to stay in the UK to look for work. Um, so it's a it's a new scheme that came into effect in July this year. Um, it's for all international students who are studying on a student visa. Um, basically, what happens is once you graduate from your bachelor's degree or your master's or your PhD, you are then able to apply to stay in the UK for either two or three years, depending on which program you graduated from, to allow you to search for a job. Um, so you don't need any sponsorship. Um, it's open to anyone, um, but it's a really great opportunity for you to be able to stay in the UK to really look for that dream job um, the, that you're looking for. Um, and that's you know, one of the reasons why you might want to come to the UK. Um, Global Education can talk to you more about the graduate route and about the whole kind of concept of visas and immigration for the UK. Um, but also you can visit the gov.uk website, which has um, all of the official guidance from the government themselves. Now, I'm pretty much at the end of my presentation. Um, we have loads of webinars on our own website that you can um, go and have a look at. Some of them are pre-recorded. Some of them will be upcoming throughout the year on lots of different subjects and topics that you might find useful. But if you want to find out more about us, then head over to the website um, and just spend some time getting to know what kind of programs we offer. Um, and if you would like to book a one-to-one -one meeting um, with myself um, just to go through any of the kind of programs in a bit more detail scan the qr code that you can see on your screen right now and it will take you to um, uh, a page where you can request a one-to-one -one meeting but that brings me to the end of my presentation um, i hope that you found it really useful um, and if you have any questions i'm more than happy to answer um, my contact details are here on the screen right now, um, so if you want to email me anytime, please feel free. So thanks very much, um, and I think over to George if you want to grill me with any questions. <laughs> Chris, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, as always, you go through everything in detail, um, and we always end up having less questions from students, so please, students, please give me the chance to grill Chris here. Um, <laughs> so much that Reading offers. I mean, we could sit here for hours and go through the various faculties and, and the way that they're set up and um, the history of them as well. Um, Chris, probably on that point with the history of Reading um, and coming from Oxford, or well, that startup college field from Oxford, um, is the, are the faculties very um, rigid or are they quite modern in their approach? Or is it like a mix of like traditional and new age university? Um, I would say that it's a, a mix. We're, we are a traditional, what we call red brick university because of when we were established, but we, we're constantly evolving the way that we work and the programs that we offer. Um, but the faculties are very autonomous, so they, they very much do their own thing. Um, uh, and when students join us, they very much become not only a part of the wider university community, but a community within that department and faculty itself. 
Um, you've got easy access to the professors who are very much there to sit down and talk to you through anything. Um, they, they very much have an open door policy. Um, and I think some students find it quite amazing that they're sat in front of some academic professors, for example, that have won Nobel Prizes. So um, I, I think the UK education has been around for a very long time. You know, universities um, like Oxford and Cambridge, hundreds of years. But yeah, Reading has some really young, very vibrant academics, researchers. Um, but it really does vary across the board and every subject area is very different. Yeah, no, it did, it did make sense as well, you know, and, and that tradition of course comes through when you listen to alumni from Reading as well as students that we've sent through and just the way that they speak about it, that they got the sense of being somewhere that's really important um, and being part of that, um, the, the future of where, you know, different careers and education is going. Um, I'm just sharing my contact details. Um, Victoria, if you'd like to book a one-to-one, -one, um, you can go directly to Chris or email us at Global, and we'll gladly put you in touch with Chris as well directly. Um, just for people listening in on this, Global Council students to a variety of different universities, but we look after you first and find out the best option for you. Um, the reason for these webinars is to get the likes of Chris in front of you where you can meet directly with representatives and ask all your questions. So if you have anything, please put them through in the chat box. Um, it's great to have Chris here with us. I know his time is limited tonight as well. We, otherwise, we'd keep him here and he'd be getting cross with me because I can't take him out for a beer. Um, <laughs> Chris, on that note, where in Reading should students go to first when they arrive? Where should they go? Wow. Wow. Uh... What would I recommend? I would actually recommend having a proper walk around the campus because I've been living and working at the university for over three years. And even now, earlier on today, I actually went for a walk around the campus and it still amazes me how beautiful it is. Um, squirrels running around in front of you. Some of them even will eat out of your hand. Um, we've got our own campus cats. So they even have their own Instagram accounts. Um, so you can follow the life of the cats and some really like oriental birds and ducks. But I think that's the thing that staff that have been here for years still find the campus just incredible. But in terms of where else to go, the town centre is pretty cool. Um, we have a huge shopping centre called the Oracle. It's got 80 shops, bars, restaurants. Um, so head there to, to take a to look at what we have to offer. Grab a bubble tea if you're interested in bubble tea um there's loads of international restaurants in reading as well um on the campus itself we have an international food market which i forgot to mention um i love that uh it's normally on a thursday during term time loads of companies come and set up in the middle of the white knights campus and they offer loads of different food from all parts of the world from africa from asia europe um not so much from the uk because our cuisine isn't really uh, that exciting um but if you come to the uk you must try fish and chips fish and chips is like our uh, our best meal and a sunday roast uh, two of my favorite foods anyway <laughs> chris um in terms of the sport at reading um it, uh, like for example those south africans and barbwins play rugby cricket and netball um are those teams highly ranked um, in the club sort of leagues in the UK? To be honest, I'm not sure where the rankings sit, um, but I can certainly have a look. Um, the, the, the leagues are called the Bucks, so B-U-C-S. So if anyone wants to go and have a look, feel free. Um, but we have football, rugby, netball, tennis, cricket, um, hockey, uh, so many of the traditional kind of sports clubs as well as some of the more kind of wild and wacky Zumba, uh, yoga. Um, so we, the, we have a big sports field right at the front of the campus, which is very close to the gym. Um, and that's where we have our football pitches, rugby, cricket. Um, we've got indoor and outdoor tennis courts. Um, the best thing to do is head over to the Rusi website, really, because they have all of that kind of info on what the clubs that we are that we offer, how to join them, um, the kind of um, events that they take part in. Um, but yeah, uh, the sports clubs aren't just for uh, 
you know, playing in the leagues. It's just for meeting other people and having fun and relaxing because we're all living in quite a stressful time, especially over the last year or so. It's really good to just get outside and um, meet some different people. And I guess that's one of the key things. I mentioned how many international students we've had at Reading. At any one time, 25% of our student population are students from outside of the UK. So it's a really international experience. Um, you're going to get to know people from different corners of the world, um, which I think is one of the huge selling points of coming to study at any university in the UK. Yeah. Um, just on that note, there's a, there's a question I wanted to bring up about this, like the support site for students. But before I get to that, Chris, um, uh -huh. Michael's put through a message here. He seems to be um, doing his degree in, in engineering, electronic, cybersecurity and that and is looking to potentially research doing a master's um, at the University of Reading. Manuel, if you could just let us know what master's you're looking to focus on, um, specifically if you have a course that we can sort of have a conversation with Chris with, I'm sure he wouldn't mind answering. Um, Chris, he's looking at something computer engineering. Um, is there something like that at Reading? So we offer an MSc in data science and advanced computing. Um, so that's the kind of specialist masters that we have in that area. Um, and that's the only masters that we offer. Uh, it's quite broad. It covers lots of different areas of computing and data science. Um, but if it's a PhD that you're looking for, then that's where things can be a bit more flexible. Um, um, if you're interested in a PhD, the best thing to do is reach out to me in the first instance um, via uh, George and the team, um, because we'll need to link you up with a supervisor, so someone that can actually um, work with you on your research topic. Um, but because we're a big university, our departments are pretty big and the academic schools, so we have lots of academics with uh, very specialist areas of expertise, so we can research we can support research in lots of different areas. Um, yeah, I think that's the best thing to do. I've got another master's slash PhD question here um, yep. from Victoria. Do you have a PhD in museum studies? Um, I'm pretty confident that we do because we have bachelor's degrees in museum studies. So if we have professors teaching on the bachelor's, then we'll definitely have the professors teaching at PhD level. So yeah do get in contact in whichever way you wish um, and we can we can do that for you. Yeah, um, to Victoria Wilburn Manuel, please do email me. My specific email is george at global-education.co.za or if you want to take a picture of the barcode that's on your screen and then we'll get you in touch with Chris directly as well. Um, that's the beauty of working with Global as well. So keep that in mind or just go directly to Chris um, and he'll definitely keep us in the loop um, to where we can help. Um, Emmanuel, what I'll do is I will send you, if you want to email me, and I can send you the link to Reading's um, courses where you can actually look on their website for various programs. This is part of what Global does. We'll, off, we'll provide you with all the information that you're interested in looking at studying. Um, and especially with somebody like Reading who offers so much, it is worth looking into, not just what you're interested in, or maybe potentially some of your other passions as well. Um, so do keep that in mind. Um, Chris, I'm just going to read out Wilbert's message. I thought, I thought you'd like it. Um, hi, everyone. Please, I'd like to have another session with Chris. I'm loving reading already. Wilbert, we're taking a on that. So please do get in contact with us. That's very kind. Thanks so much. Um, Chris, the question I wanted to ask you earlier was about the support for, for students. Um, it, it seems to come up a lot in our webinars. Um, I think students are a lot more savvy than back in, in our day. Um, I wish I took advantage of them. Um, is it very, um, sorry, I keep saying, um, is it sort of a remote area where the student services is? It's like you get directed from a website and then go and meet somebody, or is it like a building where people can walk into and sort of feel a bit more comfortable? How does it feel, how, what is it like at Reading? Both. Um, so we have support centers that are dotted across the campus where students can physically go in and have a chat with someone. Um, generally it's, um, what you'd need to do the support centers are kind of there to triage if they can't answer your question then 
they will triage you and point you in the direction of the department or the colleague that you would need to potentially book an appointment with. Um, we've got about 20,000 students here at Reading, so if all students at once came for support, it just wouldn't be possible to answer right there and then. But yeah, the support centres are there for students that want that kind of face to face um, or on the website, there's um, direct booking links for all of the different areas of support. So whether that's uh, health, well-being, uh, mental health, uh, counselling, the careers service, finance, money, immigration, you name it, we'll give you the support. And it's all there included within you know, the fee that you pay for your tuition. But I think, George, one of the things that you said just now, you know, I wish I took, you know, wish I took advantage of this stuff when I was at uni. That's the point. Um, when you come to uni in the UK, you are an adult. If you need access, if you need support, you have to go and access these services yourself. Um, it's not like being at school where, um, you know, a teacher might say, right, you need to go and see the, the careers advisor. Um, it's very much up to you. And I think that's what I really want to make sure that everyone's aware of. Um, the support is there, but you have to be the one to go and to go and access it. But even now, like if you just Google, Google like University of Reading student support, it will take you to our student support website and you'll get an idea of what we offer students and the whole process, how it works um just to kind of help you to get into the mindset of what's available mm. but a huge amount of money goes into student support every year so yeah the tuition fees that you pay don't go into the the big bosses and their salaries it goes back into all of the services that we provide at the uni and just to make sure that we're always improving um what we can offer you yeah, no, it's definitely something that, um, you know, it's important to all of us at Global. So, Chris, thank you very much. We do appreciate that. Um, if anybody has any more questions for us, please do let us know. Um, we've got a few more minutes left with Chris's time. I'm trying to make him sweat it out. For <laughs> if anyone wants to know what the plants are behind me, feel free. And I, I'm happy to <laughs> tell you more about those. <laughs> Um, a bit of a pro tip that I learned from the last research I did with the University of Reading was their um, alumni section on the website. Um, if anybody is curious, go and check it out. Some pretty interesting stories there. Um, yeah. What's pretty cool, actually, is our first international student came from, from your part of the world. Uh, 1908, um, a student from Kenya came to study agriculture. Um, so we really have been welcoming international students for a very long time. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing the history how things carry on and progress. Um, I've got a couple of scholarship questions here that I might answer for you, um, Chris. Go ahead. And they are asking for 100% scholarships. It seems to be a question that pops up every now and then. They are very difficult to obtain and very few universities offer full 100% scholarships. Uh, Chris, if you want to elaborate any more as well please do yeah so the only time that we'll really offer a hundred percent scholarship is if we've been given funding from an external organization that has stipulated that the money that they're donating to us must be spent on scholarships um but as i mentioned earlier we're part of lots of scholarship schemes like commonwealth and achievement that support students um studying at uk universities so um, they, they all offer slightly different packages, but most of them would offer a full tuition and maintenance um, funding for you. But as you can imagine, very competitive. Um, you have to go through a screening process with Chevening or Commonwealth. You also have to apply to us to get an offer for your course. Um, and you're competing with hundreds of students from or thousands of students from all over the world. But, don't let that you deter you because we have students from the Commonwealth and from Chevening that enroll with us every year, but they really are the kind of the creme de la creme, mm. the best of the best. And these are people that are going to do their masters or PhD in the UK and go back to their home country and, and make a real, real difference. Yeah. And just to add to that as well, it changes your visa process as well. Um, different scholarships that you potentially would be on. So I do suggest reaching out to um, that info email at Global and one of the senior counselors will have that conversation with you um, because it does affect your visa as well. 
Um, and just for anybody listening in on this as well, to apply to the UK for your visa, you need to show some proof of funds as well um, for that, which is separate to your application. So do keep that in mind. And these are all the types of questions that we get involved with with you to make sure that you can make an informed decision on what's good for you. Um, as always, Chris, thank you very much. I really do appreciate your time today. Um, I hope to see you soon. I hope so too. Yeah. Thanks everyone for listening. I um, hope you found it useful and I hope to see some of you. Yeah. Again. So thanks to global for putting on the, the event for us. Thanks Chris. And uh, Chris, one more place in Reading, where should they go oh, in the city? Gosh, you're putting me, uh, uh, I'm taking them down for tips for me. Uh, it's my favorite coffee house. Actually it's called coffee under pressure. It's very cool. Very, very cool. And great coffee. Because in the UK, we love coffee. Brilliant. I'll bring that one. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Have a lovely evening. And everybody keep safe. And um, we'll see you on the next webinar. Awesome. Thanks, everyone.